Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. Today we are going to be looking at an AND slicer or what was originally developed to be a patient cohort measure. Now patient cohort, uh, think of it in terms of you have a bunch of patients, they go to the hospital over the course of many visits and they get different diagnoses um, at those visits. And you have a hospital that wants to collect a and find, figure out and get a subset of patients that all share the same comorbidities or the same diagnoses. So that was the original context of where this measure was developed. Now in this data model, this is the original um, that is out there. It's not this, this is not actually in Mushkukum, but I figured I'd go ahead and cover it anyway. So if you look through, you won't find an and slicer or the patient cohort anywhere in here. Um, but I wanted to include it because I'll, I'll include this in the next version uh, when I release the next supported measures.json or the next version of Mushkukum Delta. And this is a pretty interesting uh, little measure. Now, in this example, again, I just have a very simple table with patients and diagnoses uh, listed. That's it. In the real model, you would have bridge tables because you'd have patients, and then those patients would go to visit multiple visits and those visits that have multiple diagnoses, et cetera. But for this example, what we're looking at in, in terms of this cohort measure is this code right here, which is deceptively simple looking, right? It's only four lines, uh, really. So it's just three measure, three variables, and then you do a concatenate X. Um, now I say it's deceptively simple looking, and I've seen other and slicers that, that out there, but I don't think I've ever seen one quite as concise as this one. And you really need to be on your game to understand your DAX game and understand context transition and all of that in order to understand how this measure does what it does. Um, because you get these things like, you know, we're doing an accept of values and then the same table, which we've, the only difference we've wrapped it, wrapped it with a calculate table. So why doesn't this always return a null set? So, let me get into explaining how this works and the way that the measure works uh, is that I can pick some diagnoses here and so you see I have a count of a 1168 if I pick another diagnosis then that goes down to 262 because there's only 262 patients that have both of those diagnoses if I pick another one it goes down to 91 pick another one now we're down to eight so these are the eight patients that have these four diagnoses. So this is essentially become an and slicer versus an or slicer, which is the normal. Now, <laughs> how does that work? Well, it's all really, the magic is really in this first table variable right here. And what you can see here is that I'm using the generate function, I'm grabbing the values of my patient, and then I have this accept statement, statement as my sec second table. And I'm feeding it basically the same table. So why doesn't this always return null? So how does this work to begin with, right? Um, but assuming you understand how this works, this what this is going to do is this is going to return all of the patients that don't have all of the di all of the diagnosis codes that have been selected in the slicer. And then I can just grab a distinct um, the distinct patients that are in that set, right? And then I can do another accept of my patients, except all the ones that are listed here, because these are all the ones that don't have all four of these diagnoses. And I just concatenate that together, and I'm left with the ones that do have all four of those diagnoses. So at a high level, this that's how this works. But why? All right, so, so to understand what's going on here, um, People sometimes mistakenly believe that generate, the generate function creates the Cartesian product of the two tables that are specified. Okay, while this is true for unrelated tables, it is not true for related tables or if you're dealing with the same table. In actuality, the generate function creates the Cartesian product between each row in the first table and the table that results from the evaluation of the second table in the context of the current row from the first table. Now this is an important distinction. It means that the current row context from the first table is passed along when evaluating the second table. 
to generate the Cartesian product of all rows from all the specified tables, you would use cross-join. So thus, since the first table argument to our generate function is the distinct list of patient IDs from our table, the second table specified will be evaluated within the row context of each row of that table. So each row of this table, the context for each row will be passed on when evaluating this table. The second table specified in the generate function is actually the resulting table from an accept function, right? That's this. The first table specified in the accept function is simply a distinct list of diagnosis codes provided using the values, or you could use the distinct function, right? So we must understand that the, that the values in the distinct function ignores row context. And you can prove this to yourself, but take my word for it. So you'll note that the value, in, uh, so this is done despite the fact that every patient has been diagnosed with every diagnosis code, right? Uh, however, distinct does, does respect the filter context provided by the slicer visualization. Thus, the table that's returned by the first table argument in our accept clause is simply a list of the diagnosis codes that were chosen in our slicer. Okay, so that's what this returns are these codes. Now we come to the second table specified in our accepts function. That's this guy. Which is simply this, it's the same thing, right? It's either values or distinct, but we wrap it in a calculate table. And so here we must understand that calculate table operates exactly like the calculate function, except that calculate table returns a table while calculate returns a scalar value. The calculate function and thus the calculate table function has a particular order of operations in which it performs its calculation. The first step in this order of, order of operations for calculate table is to evaluate the specified table in the original row and filter context. So thus, by wrapping our distinct or distinct or our values function with calculate table, we force row context back into the evaluation. So which row context? Well, it's the row context provided by the first table parameter in our generate series. Thus, the second table specified in our accept function, this guy, returns only the diagnosis codes for each patient, which is not necessarily all the diagnosis codes specified in our slicer, which is what this returns. In fact, the only time that the table in our accept function where all the diagnosis codes specified in our slicer match the second table is for patients that have all the diagnosis codes specified in the slicer. So in that case, this will return a blank or a null table. This is the reason why table does not include, this is the first variable, this first table, does not include patients that meet all of the criteria specified in the slicer. And that's how that that's how it works in a nutshell. So the interesting thing about this, this uh I've got I've come into a couple debates with some people that you know say that they well we're, I'm the master of DAX, I know everything there is to know about DAX. And, and in those cases, I I tend to give them this problem right here and say, okay, explain how this works. Um, and generally no one can. Um, now I did include a very detailed explanation that I just went through now in a DAX cookbook because this is included under the patient cohort and slicer recipe. Uh, I think it's in chapter nine. Um, but it's an it's a nifty little bit of kind of magical looking code um, that does some pretty cool stuff. Because um, again, once I I can just get the distinct list, I create an accept table which then returns all the people all the patients that do have these four codes, and I just concatenate them together, and that's how I get this list, or I can get the count of them. So that is how uh, this particular AND slicer operates. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, you can find the patient cohort measure is out in the gallery. So you can download the PBIX. It's got all the code out there for it in terms of cohort and count of cohort basically the same code. The, the, the version in DAX cookbook is a little different because I updated it uh, to be uh, to use things like distinct um, instead of values. 
few other minor differences, and I'll probably be updating uh, the, that updated code will appear in the next time I release supportedmeasures.json or if uh, when I release the Delta version of Mushkukum. So hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.